Great. Congressman Tanidar, thank you so much for talking to me, and I appreciate your time. Now, Kamala Harris ended her presidential race with her concession speech at Harvard University uh, following her loss to Republican opponent Donald Trump. Uh, your key takeaways from that speech? Well, you know, she ran a good campaign. Just in 107 days, she worked hard. She went all across America. She excited many young people. And... Uh, she, you know, did her best. And I think her speech was um, uplifting to people. N never give hope. Uh, as long as we keep fighting, uh, this fight is not a short-lived fight. It's going to take a little bit. But we need to continue to fight and we'll, we, will, we will eventually win. I think that was her message. Uh, she also... Uh, showed a class by saying that she will help the transition. She was gracious enough to reach out to uh, President-elect Trump. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, she showed uh, what a good leader she is, and she fought a good fight. All right. Let's rewind a little bit and take you back. Uh, not less than 24 hours ago, America began to get a sense of where the elections were really leaning. Uh, what were you thinking when the polls began to close and one by one, you know, states turned red um, and very little blue? It was. It was heartbreaking. It was something that was not uh, something we were hoping for or we were expecting. Uh, but I do understand the voter sentiment. And it is time for uh, Democrats, my party, uh, to understand where the voters are coming from and uh, what is it that the voters are saying uh, and what have they said through uh, their exercise of um, their uh, voting rights? What have they said through the ballots? We need to really pay attention to that, and we need to uh, do a lot of soul searching and introspecting to understand the voter sentiment and uh, the message that the voters have sent it to us. Right now, who, according to you, are these voters? You know, who gave uh, President-elect Donald Trump uh, this kind of a massive lead? Hello? Yes. No, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear me? Um, no. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, talk to us about, you know, who do you think are those voters who were out there who went and voted for Donald Trump and gave him that massive lead? Well, look, uh, from the exit polls, we see that uh, nearly... Uh, 50% of the voters, uh, people that are living from paycheck to paycheck, people that are struggling to put food on the table, kitchen table issues, expenses, paying uh, for uh, health care, paying for groceries, gasoline, uh, uh, paying for your know, children's uh, education. Uh, so uh, so uh, people are struggling. These are the people who... Uh, work with their own hands, whether they are uh, auto workers or whether they are teachers or firefighters. Some of them, many of them may or may not have a college degree, but they work hard. They work hard to raise their family and they're all struggling. Uh, the cost of living has gone up substantially. $100, what did he used to bring in terms of groceries just three, four years ago? Today, that's not the case. Uh, you know, the buying power has gone down and uh, people are hurting. And people feel that the current administration is responsible for uh, the economic situation. And uh, they have sent a clear message. And what Donald Trump has done is that he has um, articulated uh, three different issues that uh, are on voters' mind. 
and voters saw that Donald Trump has uh, understood uh, their concerns and their uh, fears and their uh, hardship. And they let Donald Trump um, be, uh, give, gave Donald Trump a mandate uh, because they saw uh, Donald Trump as a agent of change at this time. Uh, in your view, do you think an anti-incumbency, uh, you know, played any role here? Or do you think that the Democratic Party went, something went amiss within the party, uh, something that they oversee or overlooked, something that they ignored clearly? Well, you know, look, the current economic problems, uh, the price increases, the inflation, uh, all of this uh, came from the uh, supply um uh, issues uh, largely originating from the COVID pandemic. And we have seen a uh, rise of inflation across the world. But people are still hurting. And people, regardless of how you're going to reason it, uh, people are hurting. And uh, they held the current administration, Biden-Harris administration, responsible for the current economic issues and economic problems. And uh, Trump talked about the cost of uh, living. Trump talked about inflation, uh, economic issues. And he also talked about the southern border and the chaos and uh, migrants uh, entering the United States uh, illegally. Uh, and he also talked about um, uh, the war in Ukraine, the war in Israel. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, these are the issues that he correctly identified that are of concern uh, to the voters. More than half of the voters are concerned about this. And uh, when Donald Trump uh, presented these problems, articulated these problems, uh, people gravitated towards him because uh, people are hurting and they want these problems solved. Right. Uh, what's the path forward for the Democrats with the House, the Senate, and Soon the executive office all would be controlled by the de uh, by the Republicans. Uh, do you see any hope there? Yes, yes. You know, look, uh, Donald Trump has gotten a mandate from the people, <clears throat> but he has to deliver. Will he be able to deliver? Will he be able to make an impact on the inflation? Uh, what would he do with the price gouging uh, by the corporations? How would he address that? How would he, uh, will he provide enough border security, uh, police, border agents? Uh, will there be enough judges to handle the cases of asylum at the border? How would he um, deal with uh, uh, undocumented immigrants? Will he be able to fix our broken immigration system? Uh, what, how will he uh, tackle Ukraine? What ideas he have? Because he has articulated the problems, but when asked about a solution, he often talked about he has a concept of a solution, but he never really articulated clear solutions to these problems. Now, it is his responsibility. The voters have put his, their trust in him and the voters are going to judge him for his performance. Now he has to deliver. Uh, and uh, if he does not deliver in two years, when we have congressional elections in 2026, uh, the voters will punish him. Uh, if he cannot deliver, will not deliver. Right. Uh, now, you know, one can't take away from Donald Trump that he's made a political comeback and how. Your comments on that and uh, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was one of the first ones to congratulate uh, President-elect Donald Trump. Do you think the bonhomie between the two leaders could play a role somewhere to take this relationship even higher or probably to the next level? Uh, it is possible. However, Trump has talked about uh, putting tariffs on uh, India and China and many other countries, uh, that would really um, impact uh, the uh, economic exchange 
uh, that will impact the commerce between these two countries. And if he really proceeds with his plans, uh, that would become a big ta uh, deterrent uh, for a healthy U.S.-India relations. There is a lot that needs to be done. We have seen attacks on the minorities. Uh, minority Hindus are being attacked in Bangladesh. Uh, Hindu um, basis of worships have been attacked uh, in Canada. And we have seen a lot of attacks on Hindu temples here in the United States. Can Donald Trump um, protect these minorities? Uh, will he uh, protect um, the rights, human rights of Hindus all across uh, the world, uh, especially on U.S. soil? So all that remains to be seen. Uh, yes, he has articulated the problems correctly. Yes, he has gotten the support of uh, the people of the United States, now he has to deliver, and that is the test. You know, we will have to see. And if he's willing to put a good faith effort, Democrats will work with him. However, if you, he uses this mandate to give tax breaks to the billionaires, if he uses this mandate to take revenge against um, he, what who can, he considers his enemies, you know, it all depends on how he's going to use this mandate. If he's going to use this mandate to benefit Donald Trump, if he's going to use this mandate to go after his perceived enemies, and if he goes after this to help his rich friends, then people will punish him in just in two years. All right. On that note, thank you so much for talking to A&I. Appreciate your time, Congressman. Thank you. Thank you for having me.